Hey there, Starship here with a Warcraft 3 commentary. Today's game features the Ukrainian Night Elf player Foggy. One of the best in Europe, one of the best I would say in the world. And the Polish undead player Terror. Now, this game is on Concealed Hill, and for me, Concealed Hill is all about the gargoyles if you play undead. So I'd be curious to see if we see a gargoyle build here from, from Terror. Right now, it's very open. It could be still a two cigarette. Could be Ted Fiends. Meanwhile, for Foggy, we actually see a Warden first. Now, the Warden is kind of a Gargoyle deterrent. I know a lot of Undead players don't like to play Gargoyles if they see a Warden. Uh, she's just too annoying to deal with. You'd rather go for a more standard army and try to push and end the game. Uh, warden against Undead is, is a very tricky matchup to play, I would say. The Warden has a lot of potential firepower, but it also, the Shadow Strike, which we'll most likely see from Foggy, also kind of gets, yeah, there we go, also kind of gets hard countered by the Death Coil. Obviously, Death Coil is going to be a lot more efficient at, at healing than the Shadow Strike will be at dealing damage, so the main options for the Warden are to just, you know, hero focus the Death Knight as much as possible with the Shadow Strike, since he can't coil himself, and also in the mid and late game to just put a lot of emphasis right here at the gold mine. You want to Shadow Strike or Fanonize the Acolytes as much as possible. Just be as annoying as you can with Blink, yeah, Staff of Teleportation, and uh, just try to get as big of an economic advantage as possible, possibly with an expansion. And uh, we actually see a, a Warden staple, which is getting a second Ancient War to supplement your, your creeping, making the creeping a lot more easy, because the Warden really isn't that good until she hits level 3. But once she does get level three, it's like it's like an, an instant uh, map control switch is flipped. Is once you have that level two shadow strike, everything is living dangerously. That's why it's almost always uh, seen with the warden. This kind of second ancient war. It's in a very conservative position, though. I mean, concealed hill doesn't have a lot of surface area to build ancients. Could have built it here, but that's a bit too obvious. So instead, this spot uh, less likely to be scouted. You can do the little green cap or just go for the expansion straight away. Let's see what Foggy does. Meanwhile, uh, Terror just kind of scouting with the Death Knight. So that does kind of imply a Ted Fiend tech. We'll see. Yeah. So we have the graveyard. It's a standard tech. Very anti warden here with the, the quick Nerubian. But Terror, really, his goal here is to make sure this warden isn't leveling up. And the best way to do that is to threaten the Wisps with Coil to force the Warden to do what she's doing right now, which is just right-click with Shadow Strike. Now, the Death Knight is not going to die, not by a long shot, but uh, he is scared off, and perhaps Foggy can even creep with these three archers, and yeah, he's bringing three additional Wisps as well, so looks like he really wants to creep while harassing. So he knows the Death Knight's far away. This is incredibly safe for him to do. It's going to cost a lot of repair time, though, but this is going to secure his level three. Might get him a super nice item as well. Meanwhile, Terror looks like he's just gonna counter creep. Oh, Crystal Ball. Probably scan the main to see if there's gargles or not. Yeah. And he sees, he might even see the fiend pop out here, and he's he's uh, exactly aware of what Terror is doing. Meanwhile, Terror with the counter creeping here. Ghouls and skeletons. Really wants to level up to get that unholy aura. Unholy aura is one of the best, uh, not counters, but one of the best uh, solutions to the warden. Right clicks, you get that additional mobility and you get some extra regeneration. Makes the Death Knight less of a, a viable target for the board. Uh, not actually level 3 yet, so he will pick it up here by killing the turtles with the archers while the warden runs up. Gets that staff, gets the boots, is what I'm talking about. So we're gonna see instant acolyte focus, but. Uh, Terror is aware of this uh, possibility and decides to get the second hero and the slaughterhouse before taking to tier 3. So if the Warden would have shown up right now, there's really nothing she can do because we we are still here at, at tier 2. Can make additional acolytes. This slow effect is going to help a lot as well. So see right here, Foggy going for the Death Knight, but the main and the Nerubian Tower are just making it impossible for the, the kill to actually happen. And a counter nuke and a blink out staff to use some moonwalls here probably yeah and we have uh, the crystal ball here was very very bad for foggy but meanwhile Terra got the pendant of mana an excellent item here for either one of these heroes and he just keeps creeping and now that 
he kind of dealt with the first wave of the warden. He's much more safe to tech. Although, it's a suspiciously late tech. He's still tier 2, which means there might be a tier 2 all incoming. That's one way undead players can deal with the warden and not have to deal with their economy getting harassed, you know, for 30 minutes. Is to just go all in with tier 2. You try to get level 3 on the death knight, you buy a mana potion, sacrificial skull, and you just go tower push. A lot of times, especially if you're expecting an expansion from the Night of Period, that's even more viable. But Terra scouts that there is no expansion so far, so he might actually... Yeah, I think this is a reaction. He sees that there's no expansion, I'll just go tier 3. And now the Warden refreshed goes in again. We should instantly focus the Death Knight. There we go. But there is a Potion of Healing. There is the Statue and Unholy Aura and Blight. So there's a lot of additional regeneration for the Undead player here. Probably not even forced into a... Uh, potion just yet. He has enough healing to actually deal with the damage over time. So, so far, this Warden isn't achieving too much other than giving, you know, giving space for the creeping with the continued use of the Ancient Warden. This is like a, a trademark of a very strong Warden player is to keep moving these Ancients of War, keep using them to creep while the Warden is harassing. So it's a lot of multitasking required. It's not an easy thing to do, but Foggy does it very, very well. Meanwhile, Terror do what he can. Sticking close to the main and picking off important camps. This is the optimum play, really. So if there's a blink in here, if there's Acolyte abuse, he can quickly run home with the Death Knight and try and save that Acolyte. But th this one will go down. There's really no way to save it. Or is there? Ooh, he actually gets it. Wow. Clutch last second coil there, but one Acolyte does go down. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It's, it is very annoying, though. The tech is still not complete, so that's going to be four Acolytes mining for quite a while actually so again this is what I was talking about before just trying to get that economic advantage even though you're tier 1 uh, sorry even though you're 1 base so we do have the 1 base tier 3 double lore for, for Foggy so it's almost like a pseudo expansion to do all this economic damage because you will get more gold than your opponent if you keep doing this over and over again so eventually when you do break and get a big army it's almost as if you've had an expansion because of how much extra gold you have compared to your opponent and the 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 real benefit, really, of staying one base as well is these moon walls uh, act as a huge deterrent. Oh, let's just see what uh, what the item lord, uh, ogre lord, item lord, the ogre lord drops before I finish that thought. This could oh war song, excellent, excellent item, plus ten percent damage for everything. Amazing item for either player to pick up, and terror is uh, rewarded for this ogre snipe. But yeah, like I was saying, the, the the benefit of staying one base is that you're very, very safe in your main. Once you get up to, you know, 80 food moon wells with Wellspring, Ancient War in a defensive location, the Undead really can't push you. So if you decide to do, go harass Acolytes for a long time, a lot of Undead players will just kind of snap and go attack your, your main and just go all in. But that's really, really hard to do against a main that's fortified with a lot of moon wells. But we actually do see the expansion, so Foggy is being very brave here. A player's forces are under attack. There's no real way to defend this right now. I mean, his army is is pretty uh, pretty weak. He could not take a straight up fight for, at all. But he is getting those bears, and uh, once these reach master, he might even do uh, like a quick break as soon as the expansion is done to try and defend it. That's when he can really take a fight. But right now, Terra's army is so much better. He has amazing items as well, like like we've seen so far, or level three lich and the first destroyer. So now every piece of the undead combo is unlocked and he has full range of the map I would say. And he can definitely take a fight with the destroyers against the bears. Let's see what he gets here. Vampora. So Vampora is going to be absolutely useless unless he does like a late game abomination switch but this would have been an amazing item for Foggy to get so stealing that away is really good for Terror. The natural next move is to check this expansion and yeah it's gonna go down. So this was just, I think, just a gamble from Foggy. If it goes up unscouted, that's huge for him. But if it doesn't, oh well. Back to Plan B. Just sitting here in your main with a lot of moon juice. See if we're getting the wellspring. Not yet, actually. I mean, it's not night time yet, so it doesn't have to be prioritized. But eventually, we really want to see that wellspring. Terror actually chain morphs the destroyer, so he eats the mana on the st a statue and then morphs it. So now we have one full mana destroyer, and he's pushing this main. And one moon mole does go down. And Foggy, looks like, I mean, he has a TP, but he's not going to do it. He's going to go for a base trade. 
But <laughs> look at Terror is more than prepared for this. Double spear tower, Nerubian. Uh, Foggy will have to TP, I believe. Right? Let's see. I mean, staying in there. Nice target focusing on the Dryad here. The only downside for Terror is there's no destroyer in the main. If there would have been, then this, this would never ever work. But meanwhile, Terror actually going for the main. I almost would have preferred going for the moon walls. This main looks like it just might not go down. But we'll see. I mean, Nature's Blessing is on the way. And these towers, I mean, the Siege Bears are doing a lot of damage. Nice target switching, uh, like I mentioned, from Terror. So making sure that Dryad goes down and uh, maybe the Spare will go down as well. No. We have to see a TP from Foggy. And this is going to be hard now because there's no Moon Juice. There's a lot of healthy uh, units here for Terror and a lot of mana. Instant Nova into everything. So everything gets Nova. Wow, that's double Ancient War here, though. I think this is going to be the, the key to, to Foggy, not just losing straight up here. The double Ancient War with Nature's Blessing. And these Moon Walls. 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way, but still no Wellspring. And yeah, here's the Hero Focus. Almost like a desperate Hero Focus with the level 5 Warden. Level 3 Shadow Strike, indeed. So Foggy just needs to force a TP here. And that looks like what he's really trying to do. If he can force... Terror to TP, he buys enough space to just breathe a little and maybe get back into the game because he can't really kill this army. It's just, it's 38 to 45. But we have the Unholy Aura, we have the statue. So it's going to be very, very hard to actually kill the Death Knight, but we'll see. Perhaps a blink in using all the Moonwall Juice here on the board and just to try and get a little more mana and go for that Death Knight. Level 2 blink, level 3 Shadow Strike. Behind this, Terra is fully stabilized, mining at full capacity. Death Knight, ooh, he should probably buy a Zeppelin, that'd be really, really smart. There we go. He just uh, ensured that his Death Knight is not going to die to any Shadow Strike shenanigans at all. So the Warden has to blink away, the army has to run, and Terra has the time now to reposition himself. Death Knight is still living dangerously though, so if he does miss on the pickup, uh, kind of miss micros at all, then this Death Knight just could go down, and once the Death Knight goes down, everything else crumbles. Like, the Death Knight is the, the glue that holds everything together for Undead. Invisibility Potion, I really like that, so... Uh, Foggy might think the Death Knight's not even there, and take a fight, and then the Death Knight reveals himself. One bear does go down. Finally, though, this Moonwell, uh, this Warden, sorry, is back at full mana. But again, she's not really using any spells because there's no Death Knight in sight. So she's. Foggy's probably ex assuming the Death Knight's here in the Zeppelin and doing everything he can to, to, to take it down. But there, the Death Knight, I think, accidentally revealed himself by right clicking. Instant Shadow Strike, Coil on the Fiend. Focus Fire with Orb and everything at once on each of these bears. More focus on the Death Knight. Oh, he tries to dodge with the Invul, but doesn't get it off in time. It does go down. It does land, sorry. Double Fiend going down. Nice scan from Foggy. So I'm curious if that was the Crystal Ball. Yeah, he actually kept the Crystal Ball, so he really came into use there. Uh, killing two Fiends with the Crystal Ball and forcing a TP. Wow. Really, really unfortunate for Terry. He tried to dodge the Shadow Strike with Invul, but it landed. And I think that changed everything here. He forced the TP. Lost two Fiends for that. You know, the solo tier 3 warden is going to get a lot of experience, so getting very, very close to level 6. A couple more unit kills, a couple more fiends going down, that's level 6, and that can definitely change the dynamic of a fight. Meanwhile, Terra's still at 3-3, pretty close to 4-4, though. And Foggy, once he's held, instantly goes into the harass mode again. This is what you have to do with the warden, this is the strength of the warden. Blink in, and just instantly kill those acolytes and hides. Nice. So, Terra is in a very awkward spot now. Uh, doing, I think, oh wow, sending the Zeppelin home to try and pick up Acolytes, but there is an orb on the uh, Warden, so the Zeppelin's not going to last very long. Just keeps harassing. Staffs out when he has to, and then I guarantee you we're going to see that happen a lot more this game, Yeah, if it goes on. Terra doing, I think, the right thing, which I think a lot of Undead players would do in this situation, was just ignore it. Tr keep creeping because you want to get those hero levels, you want to get those items, you do get a little bit of gold for creeping as well. 
So you just kind of let it happen and try to overwhelm your opponent with your heroes later on. But like just killing those acolytes, look how much experience. It was the warden was five and a half. And it's now attack. almost six just from killing acolytes. That's how much experience you get. The bonus experience for being a solo hero at tier three. Clarity's moonstones. Still no wellspring. I'm incredibly surprised. I think Foggy just forgot it. It's such a crucial upgrade. Uh, instead opting to get the improved attack upgrade. But we should definitely be seeing Wellspring at some point. Makes the Warden that much more scary. Surprisingly, uh, Terror has not sold the Vampora. Maybe wants that little bit of extra re regeneration from the Death Knight right clicks. Instant Shadow Strike there on the Death Knight. And Foggy actually double expanding. So one expansion down here and one expansion. This was probably not going to get scouted. And a lot of undead players will not want to expand against warden players because that just gives them one extra gold mine to harass. So this is actually very unlikely to get scouted if there's no intention to expand from the undead. And oh, this especially, this especially makes it almost impossible for Terror to scout that expansion because he believes. Oh wow, no cancel. That's a lot of resources lost. But Terror now believes he's canceled the one expansion. He's reset the game to one base to one base. There's no way he's going to think about this right now. Meanwhile, Foggy keeps the press going, inching closer and closer to level 6. This fiend will give him that level 6. He probably kept the crystal ball just for Burrow. That's actually pretty cool. There we go, level 6. And we might just go into phase 2 of the base trade. Blinks in. Ooh, abusing the graveyard. The under graveyard, of course, drops spawns corpses, which the Avatar of Vengeance can actually use to make these Spirits of Vengeance. Very, very annoying for the undead to deal with, and, and this space trade is a lot more likely for Froggy to actually win. So uh, we'll probably see the reverse of what happened earlier this game, which, yeah, Terror is going to be the one who TPs this time. But the main might just go down. Froggy just might right-click it and ignore everything else. He does indeed. And, oh, Froggy has no TP. I'm not sure if he's aware of that. He has to run. He really, really has to run. Just go, go, go. Still four Acolytes, so the main goes, goes down which is a huge blow to Terror, but the main does have four Acolytes mining. It's a pretty good mining still, and it should probably instantly be built in Necropolis as soon as he can afford it. But I think Foggy just forgot they didn't have the TP there, so he lost quite a bit of army. And there's no staff for preservation. This is the downside of having the solo hero as Night Elf, is you just don't have the inventory space necessary to hold everything you want it to have. You really want to have the staff, you want to have orb, and you want to have TP. But Foggy can't really hold all those items, so... No staff for preservation. Straight goes back for the harass, and this is where it's very, very scary for Terror because every acolyte lost now cannot be replaced. And if every acolyte goes down, the game is over. So there we go with the Necropolis. Oh, actually, coils the warden instead of the acolyte. Interesting. Uh, so two acolytes now, now remaining uh, on the gold mine. Necropolis being built. This is like the, the, the saving grace for Terror right now. But again, this expansion. It's just not gonna. I don't think it's gonna get scouted this entire game. It's just. It's not something you're gonna look for as undead when you just killed this expansion. Crystal ball saved by a quo. And now, still no wellspring. I mean, wow, this is actually gonna make it so much more difficult for Foggy. Ooh, dodges the coil with the invul. But that's not gonna be enough yet. Blink. He has to blink away and just go straight back for the harass. Oh, classic Foggy. Double Sapper. He is committed to this base trade. And Terror... Ooh, this is a very cool move. Getting the Staff of Teleportation on the Death Knight. Excellent way to deal with the harass. Just staffing in whenever the Warden shows up. But that is one Acolyte dead. Necropolis getting sappered. There we go. And has to be cancelled. Last Acolyte is down. No more Acolytes. But the Warden is actually going to go down. Yeah, there's nothing she can do. She's dead, level 5. 5-5 five, five heroes with no economy against really nothing and double economy. What a strange game. I'm really curious how this is going to work out. On the one hand, Terra has by far the better heroes, the better army. On the other hand, Foggy has the economy and... Foggy is one of the absolute best players, I would say, at this style of game. He's very, very good in these clutch base trade situations. He knows what to do. He knows how to play it to its advantage. 
Still no wellspring, I can't believe it. So what's Fog going to do? I mean, this is really what we've got to keep tabs on. Look, Terror is scouting these two expansions. This is the only thing on your mind. It's like he's either expanding here or here. There's no way you're going to check for this. So this really, really hurts Terror. He thinks he's in a good spot right now because there's just this one main. If he can kill it, they're both on zero economy as far as he knows. Then he has a good chance of winning the game. Oh, finally, the reveal. Terror is going to see the tree of life and he's going to be very very disappointed he'll probably right click the gold mine as well see that oh it's been up there for a while damn and now more sappers more building right clicks still a lot of building health here though not a lot of damage output for for foggy nice sapper positioning kills both towers no more damage output at all and now it's a pure base race save for the fact that uh, terror is actually bringing his heroes back and I think these heroes alone are threatening enough that uh, Foggy can't stay here. Going instantly for the Warden. Switching target to the Bear now. Bear is going to go down. One Dried, one Abomination having a little standoff here. Double statue. Ooh, these two statues are going to be so important for Terror to make sure that Death Knight doesn't run out of mana. There we go with the mana and health regeneration. Nova focus. Yeah, I mean, Foggy can't really fight at all, and meanwhile, the excellent uh, split of Terra's army here. So sending the Fiends to slowly deal damage to this Tree of Life, but uh, Warden staffs in, focuses down Fiends, but there's going to be more and more coils. Just looking if there's any more expansions. There's a shop here from Foggy, two Destroyers slowly dealing with the uh, main base. What's left of the main base? One Dryad coming in to save the day. Warden running home. Main is going to get taken down. There's a lot of gold for Foggy, but no wood. So he can't really afford to rebuild his main. He's got one Wisp, two Wisps, and you know, five in here. All of these Wisps should go down if Terror is scouting properly. Instant Nova for level six. Ooh, level six Lich. That's actually going to be a game changer. This is one of the few times where the uh, Death and the Decay ultimate is going to come into play, I, I assume. I mean, of course, these Ancients can get uprooted. There's not a whole lot to, to use Death and Decay on, but even using it just on the altar or the Hunter's Hall in a clutch situation where time is of the essence, and that's definitely going to be a good ultimate. Of course, he might just pick uh, Frost Armor or Dark Ritual if he wants to be super safe. It does not actually scout the Wisps up here. That's crucial. So Foggy, slowly but surely, is going to get more and more wood. The question is, is he going to get wood enough before he gets revealed? That's going to be the question. Can he build a Tree of Life before he gets revealed or not? Uh, he's actually just committing to more moon walls. He's not even going to expand. So, I wonder if he's just going to spam moon walls with the gold he has left and try and win with just a hero. Hero and moon walls. Oh, ultimate. This ultimate is going to help so much. Staff on both heroes. Really cool play. Double telestaff. Blink out from the warden. Avatar runs away and. Ooh, what a frustrating position for Terror, because these spirits, of course, are invulnerable. There's nothing you can do about the right-clicks right now. That's a massive damage output once you get all of these summoned from the graveyard. He almost should, like, kill his own graveyard to make sure these corpses don't spawn. Of course, if the avatar itself goes down, all the spirits die, so Terror is trying to chase it down. It does have that in Holy Aura, so he is actually very, very close to catching it, but it is magic immune, so as long as it keeps running... Is it magic immune? I'm pretty sure it's magic immune. Maybe it's not, but either way, it's running away and healing up. Foggy doesn't want to lose the actual avatar, because then the spirits disappear. Of course, they're going to disappear by themselves eventually. But this does put a, a ticking clock over Terrier's head. Eventually, if the game, if nothing happens in this game from this point on, eventually these spirits will win the game. Even if it takes an hour, eventually those spirits will win the game. Unless, like I said, Terrier would kill his own graveyard to make sure the, the corpses don't spawn. But that's a pretty drastic measure to take, and it's a lot of hit points that he doesn't really want to remove from the game. Meanwhile, Warden keeps harassing. Just checking. There's no more. Tr yeah. There's no tree. Just invested into Moonwalls and items. Clarity's here. Going for units, actually. So. Actually, picks off a fiend. So, slowly but surely, whittling down the army there of terror. 
but I'm not sure what the end game is for, for Froggy. Like he's not even if he kills a fiend, he can't fight this army. So I feel like the only only chance he has is to hero focus or kill buildings. If the Death Knight ever does go down, he instantly wins the game. So that's a very tempting uh, tempting target for, for Froggy. Destroyers slowly focusing down the full moon wall. Warden staffs home to use it before it goes down, and can obviously attack these destroyers with orb and dryads coming in. So four dryads actually. So he actually invested some gold into dryads as well. Interesting choice. I guess uh, he wants to have the anti-destroyer squad just protecting his buildings. Meanwhile, the spirits slowly but surely whittling down the buildings. This could be a checkmate. The question is, can Terra really do anything about this? I mean, there's really not that many buildings left. Oof, such a mobile hero in the late game with that high level blink. I think Terra's just gonna go for it. It looks like he's abandoning his base. The Avatar of Engine shows up. Now, Avatar of Engine has a very, very long uh, lifespan, so as soon as it dies, you have. The cooldown's basically off, so you can resummon a new one. Which means we're gonna have more avatar, more spirits killing these buildings. And now Terror changes his mind, he doesn't want to fully commit to base trade. He sends back the statues and the heroes, he wants to defend. But again, Fog is gonna do the exact same thing, keep the Avatar alive, let the spirits do damage. Meanwhile, Terror is actually killing that last moonwall, the last of the proxy moonwalls at least chasing the warden. It's a very hectic game. Ideally he wants to kill this avatar, but it's so hard. Might pick off a dryad though. Nope. Oh, army gets caught out. Double staff in, but it's gonna blink away instantly from Foggy. It's actually such a smart choice to get these dryads, because they're magic immune. I didn't really think about the implication here, because if you have dryads and the warden as your only army, there's really no way for Terror to catch it. So as soon as you catch something off guard like this, you get a fiend. By the time the heroes show up, the dryads can just run away, the warden can blink out. So very, very cool to invest into those dryads. Actually, very, very uh, smart. I did not think about how, how valuable they would turn out to be. Hey, here we go, Death of Decay. So yeah, actually, I think I missed it, but we saw the end there. He, he Death and Decayed uh, one of the buildings there. And Foggy desperately, desperately eating uh, with a Ancient lore here. So who's gonna win? It's, it's pure. Oh, Moonmole. But yeah, Foggy is revealed, which means that Terror does see this on his mini map. He sees the Moonmole being constructed and sends a Death Knight to, towards it. But yeah, the chat's predicting that Terror's gonna lose. But there's a lot of health left on these buildings, and the only thing Foggy has left are these three buildings. The heavy armor getting focused on quickly by the destroyers. Oh my god. Looks like... I think Terror might just take it. This altar is the last building after this moonwall. If the Death Knight can actually DPS down this moonwall, which I'm not actually sure he can. <gasps> Warden staffing back. Slows down the damage output. But no. Moonwall is cancelled. Altar. <sighs> Goes down. Whew. So chat was wrong. <laughs> What what a close game. Incredibly close. But uh, Terror does end up winning the base trade there. Clutch uh, moving up the Death Knight there to, to kill the Moonwall while simultaneously killing the last buildings here, down here. Wow. What an amazingly close game. And nice patience by Terror and a lot of things he did right there in this type of game. Getting the double staff of teleportation is huge. But I mean, Foggy is also like a master at this type of game, so very, very fun to watch. So I hope you guys enjoyed, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time, goodbye.